Now, we're going to have, we're a little bit um, compressed for time. We're going to have a Q&A session that will last about 10 minutes. Um, that almost certainly might cater for everyone's questions. So I ask you two things. Oh, I ask, sorry, uh, afterwards, if, sorry, the speakers will be available at lunchtime, and you may have the opportunity to ask some questions then personally. Otherwise, if you can email us your questions, we will certainly respond to them. If you don't have email, please write the questions on a piece of paper before you leave, and we'll, um, we'll work out how we can make a response to you. Give us your telephone number. Um, I'll ask people when I ask the questions, it's not an opportunity to make long statements. Uh, we do have a, a great session later in the day when you can make contributions, and you're most welcome then. But today, the questions can be restricted to about one minute. If you uh, go over one minute, Kate will put her angry face on and look straight at you. So, we've got any questions for the panel, please? Uh, sorry, we've got uh, moving microphone. Fugitives are up around, you know, 
some uh, four percent or seven percent or something like that, then um, coal seam, coal seam gas from a purely emissions perspective will, will definitely be worse than coal when it's burnt in Australia or when it's burnt overseas. But we need we actually just need it, you know, we, we need to do the measurements to find out what's actually going on first. Thanks, Mark. Uh, there's, there's a huge amount of, yeah, so, so it's energy demand from overseas, particularly from Asian countries, uh, and because they've got really growing economies, and, you know, they're making decisions at this point in time about what kind of energy infrastructure they build, and if there's a lot of cheap gas on the market and coal, then they'll build coal and gas infrastructure. Um, but if we, you know, but otherwise they'll build renewable energy infrastructure and countries like India and China in particular have a lot of renewable energy so we are really just hoping the trend, the trend goes that way. Thank you. Uh, we just have one question around here because there's lots of hands up. Um, when you answer your question, you'll be next, sir. If you could let your hands up for a moment, we'll take the mic to you fairly quickly.
not trying enough or when the conditions particularly nasty compared to the ones we have here. Does it not send a boring message for us or just means one different in Europe? Sorry, can you damage that's been done in Queensland? Could you just repeat the end of that? Oh, sorry. Um, it's being pointed out that you know, we are now what Queensland was six years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And I was wondering why you know, is Queensland now so bad? You know, did people not do the right campaigns that we are trying to do? Or what's the difference? You know, who would be Queensland? Queensland has these big projects, these four massive projects, three of them are actually locked in to go ahead, they've had all their approvals. Um, and but the but the the wells haven't been drilled yet, you know, they're starting to drill the wells and put in all the infrastructure, but there's a long way to go. Now they're gonna be it's gonna be very difficult for those to be stopped. But there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of people in Queensland, like the Lafayette Alliance, who are fighting very hard to, to um, you know, resist the infrastructure going in across massive areas of Queensland. So I think the, um, I think the damage is yet to come to the environment and agriculture. I think the, the fight is still on between, um, you know, farmers and, and people trying to, and, and environmentalists, etc., trying to stop it. I think it's fight is still on, but it's going to be a much more difficult fight. And New South Wales is relatively lucky because, you know, it's so much harder to stop projects once they've got production licences and have had all the approvals than it is to stop them when it's just at the exploration stage. So, um, so, it's, so it's really important to get in early, basically, if, if you want to stop um, these massive projects. Thanks, Mark. Look, we'll take just one more question. Um, the dual put the which we you know. Well, I haven't actually got a question. I just wanted to say to everyone that's here, if you're really, really interested in a lot of information from an independent point of view, there's a report written by the Australian Institute called Mining the Truth, the Rhetoric and Reality of Commodities Boom, and it actually talks about a lot of things like Mark and Jess mentioned. Easy access on the internet. Get it, have a read, very easy to read, and it really does answer some interesting questions. Can I just add there? If I, I haven't, I've, I haven't laid out sign up sheets. I don't think there's any BZ volunteers here. But if people are interested in the information I've been talking about and the Australia Institute report, because we're involved in it as well, um, uh, I can send links and stuff to people. So maybe um, just see you later and, and um, give me the details. And I can put you on our on our list and, and get back to you with with more information. Thanks, Mark. Look, I do apologise that the question session was shorter than we expected, but we'll have opportunities later in the afternoon and during the break. We'll cut the session, the, the questions now. I'd like to go on um, to show the next video, which is an example and one man's experience of what's actually happening in the Tara estate at the moment. We can turn those lights out. I come from a little place uh, called William Billet, between Chinchilla and Tara in South East Queensland. Um, I actually used to hate coming to these things, but I actually like it now because it, it gets me away from home. Um, it's, it's a sad fact, but um, you know, I'll, just, I'll give you a, a bit of a, uh, an idea of what I go through in the last 48 hours. Um, I was woken at um, 3 o'clock yesterday morning by a outside the front gate and uh, a compressor station uh, whirring away, um, I was inside my lounge room and continued on in the morning um, with about 50 truck movements between 6am and 6.30am past my house to repair the road that had been ruined over the past 100 days of uh, connecting um, five wells uh, right next to my house. Um, then I woke up at 4am uh, this morning to come here, pretty pissed off. <coughs> And I actually pulled up to take a photo through all of uh, seven drill rigs that were operating within seven kilometres of my house. And um, my anger got the better of me and I, I just decided to uh, block the road. And 
Unfortunately for the gas company, there was uh, three buses of 50 men and uh, ended up doing about a five kilometre traffic jam for the 20 minutes that I had them. 